Since Angela's reversion, one deck has consistently been at or near the top of the tier list. That is the Move Angela deck. I think I have found an excellent build of that list. It doesn't set the bar, it is the bar. So when I say it is the bar, what I mean by that is this is the baseline deck that you have to be prepared for if you want to succeed in this metagame. There have been multiple permutations of this deck. I have found by far the most success without cards like Silk and Craven. So I don't think it's fair to really call this Silky Smooth anymore, given she's not even in it. This is just a typically good cards mid-range list that is looking to play the best cards in the game in whatever order you can plausibly make it happen. One of the advantages that this deck has over the Craven Silk stuff is that once you get Silk out of the deck, you can play Miss Marvel and she's not gonna be bad. In fact, she's gonna be very good. In addition, being able to play Miss Marvel and Doctor Doom gives you a great ability to play against lockdown decks that are becoming a little more common. Of course, Miss Marvel is also good in the context of just being a large amount of points. Having a lot of points allows you to contest those combo decks that are going extremely tall. Now, this is very much a Hope Summers deck. She is what the deck is built around. She is why you get to run two of these big ass six drops and actually play both of them in the game when you are otherwise totally unable to do that. That is a crucial part of this deck. But generally speaking, what's happening here is you're just playing the 12 best possible cards that you can slap in here that work with your Angela Hope mid-range game plan. Being an Angela Hope deck, it should come as no surprise that Kitty Pride is pretty important to how this deck wants to play out. However, in the absence of Hope Summers, you're often going to not want to be investing in Kitty Pride. That is because you are very likely to want to play a six drop on the final turn of the game. Being able to play that six drop on the final turn of the game is great with Kitty Pride if you have a Hope Summers, but if you do not have a Hope Summers, you actually don't have a lot of ways to use that Kitty Pride if it's stacking up Elsa buffs. You're going to want to use those Elsa buffs on cards like Nightcrawler, on cards like Vision, on cards like Jeff instead, unless you have Hope Summers, which allows you to play something along the lines of Doctor Doom plus Kitty, Red Hulk plus Kitty. That kind of stuff is very good. There are going to be the odd game where you're like interested in playing a Shang and a Kitty and you don't have Hope Summers. And so in those games, you're like, OK, yes, if I'm going to be Shanging on the final turn of the game. Yes, I want the kitty to get as big as possible, but generally I think one of the biggest mistakes people make with a deck like this is tunnel visioning on kitty pride and then being forced to choose between your seven or nine power kitty and playing a red hulk on the final turn of the game. And it's like, oh man, I really wish I had the ability to do both of those things, which you don't without Hope Summers. This dynamic is why Nightcrawler is important in the deck because in those games where you're not playing Hope Summers, you need Nightcrawler, you need Jeff, you need Vision, and those are the cards you're going to want to carry those Elsa buffs instead of Kitty Pride if you are planning on playing a six drop on the final turn of the game. And given the power of your six drops, Doctor Doom extremely strong and relatively unexpected right now, and we all know how big Red Hulk can get, you are very often planning for this. Having a one drop that is not Kitty, that just stays on the board, is genuinely very important. Angela, since her reversion, has been the keystone of the metagame, and decks like this are a big reason why. Angela plus Hope plus Elsa plus Kitty plus eight cards is just honestly fine. Like, you can do pretty much anything you want in that shell because of the power it enables you to bring to bear. Angela, of course, is a card you're going to want to think about a lot in context. In mirrors against other decks that may be playing Shang-Chi, you're going to want to sincerely think about, like, okay, I don't want her to get above eight. I want her to stay below that so she can't get Shang-Chi'd. I need to think about priority on the final turn if she's at six or eight, and I'm going to get her above eight because of the way priority works. If I get her to 10 on the final turn because I have priority and then they Shang it, I'm in trouble. Maybe I play the Doom in an off lane so that I don't end up going there. But at the same time, because Angela is so big, you have the ability to threaten multiple lanes with you need to shang this, right? So like she can get up to like 12, 14, you have a Red Hulk in another lane, and suddenly it's like, well, one shang's really not gonna be enough. So you have to think about how you want to deal with her, what threats you want to present, and how much you're willing to risk getting shang chi and just saying, you know what, if you Shang me, I'm still gonna win this game. I know I said it was, you know, the 
Angela, Kitty Pride, Elsa, Hope Core, but Jeff is in every one of those decks, so I don't really think it's fair to call it just the Angela, Kitty, Elsa, Hope Core. I think it's about as common to see a deck missing Jeff from that core as it is to see a deck mi missing Elsa or Hope, right? <laughs> like, this is very much a piece of that core for very obvious reasons. Like, the whole thing is that you want to be able to play cards in your Angela, Hope, Elsa lane that get the Elsa buffs, then move out, and then you get more buffs, you get more energy, you get a bigger Angela. Jeff obviously goes with that. Elsa Bloodstone is, I think, the least important of the major core cards in here. You could try other stuff, but I think this deck is built to use her effectively both with and without Hope Summers, which is good because this deck has not just Jeff, but also Vision and Nightcrawler that can take her buffs and just move them elsewhere and you don't get caught in the I tunnel visioned on Kitty Pride, but I also want to play a six drop trap. I think this is a very, very good deck for Elsa. I don't really know what to say about Hope Summers that hasn't already been said. She is an absolute engine. She is probably the most important card in this deck in winning mirrors. I think there are definitely going to be games when you know you're playing against another Angela deck. If you guys both have Angela, but you have hope and they don't, and you can follow up that hope with something real, that's actually just a snap condition because of just how strong this card can really be. This card lets you play two six drops in mid-range mirrors. That should be enough to convince you of how good it actually is. Of course, you have Doctor Doom, you have Vision, in order to play cards on the Hope lane and then project power elsewhere. This deck is built to do this. Hope is the keystone of the deck, and it really helps setting the tone because you can output a phenomenal amount of power because of the energy this card gives you. I'm not gonna lie, Shang-Chi was mostly fairly mediocre for this because there are so many decks that are built to beat Shang-Chi right now. Almost every deck has a methodology against Shang-Chi, right? Whether that be not going taller than what can be hit by Shang-Chi, something like Phoenix Force or, you know, something like uh, this deck, for example, mostly doesn't go taller than what can be hit by Shang-Chi or can at least play to avoid it. Now, then there's decks that don't really put their power on the board until the final turn of the game, like Hela, decks that are totally immune, like Living Tribunal, decks that really just don't actually put anything on the board. Again, we mentioned Hela, Mr. Negative goes in that category. Like, this is a card that has defined the metagame to such an extent that almost everything is able to say, I do not lose to a Shang. Like, every deck in the game, basically, is willing to be like, you know what, nothing, I have a ton of points, but none of it's Shangable. You Shanging doesn't win the game. And so for that reason, he actually is about as bad as he's ever been, but you still run him because even when he's as bad as he's ever been, that's still Shang-Chi. I think either of the Marvels is the major flex spot in here. I was playing this with Luke Cage. I thought about playing it with Mobius, but what I eventually arrived at was just, I wanted to play the version of this deck that has the most baseline power, that just does the most stuff. And once Doom was in there, it was like, all right, if I'm going to be a Dr. Doom deck and I'm not going to be a Silk deck, I'm very interested in being a Miss Marvel deck again. I am very interested in just saying, you know, this is a 415. I'm going to be favored against the people who are doing the same thing I'm doing because I'm playing a 415 and a 615. I'm able to spread my power better. And for the most part, that was borne out. She was pretty good. But that said, if you want to like play, you know, a Luke Cage to deal with whatever you're seeing, a Mobius to deal with whatever you're seeing, an Enchantress, whatever. If you want to just play a tech card here, I'm not going to blame you. The same goes for Captain Marvel. Now, Captain Marvel was in all of my builds of this because she goes with the core a little bit better than uh, Miss Marvel does. She's a little bit more able to just be like fire and forget, play her into a lane, do whatever. But what Miss Marvel was doing was like, she also was just like good against, you know, like various decks that are trying to, uh, like Miss Marvel was good against like, you know, like Professor X stuff, like things of that nature where Captain Marvel doesn't do anything there, but Miss Marvel, they're probably not playing around and that can be really valuable. Like, this is a good card, but again, the same lack of objections I would have to you messing around with the Miss Marvel slot, I would have to you messing around with this slot. Miss Marvel is a stronger card, but there are some, like, play constraints that she creates that Captain Marvel does not create. Like, Miss Marvel makes you want to play your, your, everything always wants to be in the middle lane. Since you often want to play Hope and Elsa in the same lane, if that lane is not the middle lane, 
you end up in a decent amount of trouble. Miss Marvel wants to be in that lane, which is also not exactly what you want because you are trying to occasionally like play Jeff and Kitty there. You want to get multiple procs off of the hope sometimes. And so she wants to like live in that lane. And then on the final turn of the game, she's often competing with something like Red Hulk. And you don't actually have, you know, if you have seven energy, Red Hulk and Kitty is usually going to be a better investment than Miss Marvel and Kitty. And then a two drop because A, your two drops kind of suck. You're not really going to be able to fit her in there. So it's basically these two cards, I think are about equal in the 11th and 12th spots in this deck. And it's a question of whether you want the one that synergizes better or the one that has more raw power. And that is going to be whichever one you decide you don't want is the one you're going to flex out for a tech spot if you'd like. Vision is so powerful and so good here. This is, of course, a great Vision deck. The one thing you're going to want to keep an eye out for is you don't always want to make him 10. Sometimes you're very interested in making him 10. Sometimes that is the thing that wins you the game. But other times you are worried like, okay, I'm going to get Shang-Chi. I want him to be eight instead of 10. I don't want that Angela to get as high as she's going to get if I play him in that lane. So just pretend, just like be mindful of the potential for Shang-Chi. Because like I said, you know, all these decks are built with Shang-Chi in mind. But just because you're built with Shang-Chi in mind doesn't mean you are always immune to him. It means you have to play in such a way that you are not vulnerable to him. That's a very different thing. Dr. Doom is an absolutely excellent card right now. I am of the opinion that he ended up getting a bit underrated in decks like this. Being able to play Hope Summers into stuff into Doom and then following that up with like a Kitty and a Red Hulk is bonkers. That is an insane amount of power. One of the things that often gets lost in Dr. Doom is that is a 615. When you look at the numbers this deck has in it, the vast majority of them are just, this is the biggest number at the cost, right? Dr. Doom is the biggest number at six that is not Red Hulk. We are already running Red Hulk. Kind of straightforward from there, I think. Like, And to, to, on top of that, the way he works with Miss Marvel is unbelievable, right? Miss Marvel into Doom has already been amazing. Being able to play the Doom first is bonkers. It's quite good. So I would say I'm a big fan of this. However, running two sixes does, by definition, make you way more reliant on Hope Summers for all of the reasons I've discussed. Re, you know, Kitty, sixes, all of that. This is very much a card that when you put it in the deck, you're like, I'm a Hope Summers deck. And that does change how you approach matchups, how you approach snapping to some degree as well. Red Hulk is big as hell. I think he is, by default, the best six drop in the game right now. And I know people are going to talk about, like, what if it gets nerfed? Do you think it needs to be nerfed? So I'm going to use this point uh, in time to talk about that. Red Hulk, I think you could argue, does need to be nerfed. I think that is an argument I will listen to. I will not dismiss it out of hand. However, my counter argument to it is, right now, I think the metagame is actually very good. I think this metagame has a variety of, you know, Angela mid-range decks. There's Professor X decks looking to target these decks with cards like Cannonball and Professor X. And they're also looking to beat the combo decks because Professor X is good against those. There's a lot of diversity in the metagame right now. Although I do think some people will look at that and say, okay, it's just Angela soup and combo soup. There are decks that meet in the middle. Decks like Clog, decks like the various Professor X deck. Decks like, I think you could reasonably describe Mr. Negative as one of those decks, even though I think a lot of people will call it combo. I think it's a combo deck that verges on the mid-range and targets the combo decks. And I think Red Hulk is part of why this meta is actually not intolerable. And I'll tell you why. Red Hulk gives small ball decks a way to plausibly stay in against a Hela, against a Nimrod, against that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it would just be kind of nothing, right? It would be a very boring, like, sort of contextless metagame where, like, every time the combo happens, you just leave, and there's never any turn sixes. And I think Red Hulk gives these decks just enough juice that they end up staying a little bit more. And I think that is a good thing for the metagame right now. If you made me nerf Red Hulk, I would do something like base power 12 plus 3, right? Like, I don't really think it's, like, that far off if it is far off. What Red Hulk is doing right now is allowing these mid-range decks, which typically operate at like right around here in power level, where like a full hella combo is here, it pushes them just a little bit closer. 
and that allows people to stay in games that otherwise they wouldn't. I think you could even argue it benefits the Hella, it benefits the PF, because playing this guy is just super fun. I think he is extremely large and extremely big and extremely strong. I don't know if he is nerfable, because I think he accomplishes this goal in a fun and enjoyable way that does not go over the top the way something like Blob did, and his similarities as a card to Eliath in terms of I am invalidating something are in a way alleviated because he is Telegraph. If your opponent knows you have this card, well, you're not going to stay in if you die to it on the one lane that they're going to play it on, right? So I think it is possible he's too strong, but right now I will say I think I enjoy the dynamics he's creating or helping to create. We'll see how it goes in the future. Don't get me wrong, I reserve the right to complain about this guy in the future if and when I find that necessary. All right, y'all, thank you so much for making it to the end of that video. I, it's not the end of that video. What am I talking about? Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. I hope everyone didn't just close the video there. We're gonna have some gameplay of this deck. I was actually very successful with it in High Infinite. It was, it was a pretty nice run. I really enjoyed it. And uh, of course, you know, by the time you see this video, Twitch drops will have started. I will probably be streaming in the evenings on the Twitch drop days. We're just gonna be going, 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 going. So stick with me and we're gonna have some awesome Twitch drops fun. You can catch me on Twitch at KMBestMS. Uh, thank you so much. As always, I've been KMBest. You just got the KM boost. I am sweating incredibly hard right now from the amount of yelling I just did recording this. I hope you're proud of me. I hope you enjoy the KM boost. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for the five gifts, Code DB, with the, with the resub. Thank you very much. We're now halfway through level three. We're now halfway through level three. That's crazy. My God, he doesn't know about the loot cage. He doesn't know about the loot cage, chat. Okay, I'm gonna stay in on the grounds that this is probably loot cage related. Do drops actually start tomorrow? Is that true? Every previous drop has been on like a Tuesday. Are drops starting tomorrow? Weird. I win this game is this a winnable game
Are we about to win this game off of that? Yeah, we are. Captain Marvel's about to move middle and win us this game. Carol! That's my girl. That's my girl. It takes more than a kingpin to keep her down. Vision gets hit? No, like, I don't actually know if it does. I'm going to be honest with you. You're positive, though. Okay. I'm pretty sure it should happen before the start of the turn. But there's like some weird shit that goes on that makes me feel like maybe that's not true. Do you have Twitch drops enabled? They're not happening yet. Well, that's unfortunate. Kind of figured that would happen. I don't know. Another goose L. So that's a Lady Sif. Discarding Giganto. So it's Giganto and what's her face in there? Giganto Black Cat. It's alright, so far. Not the end of the world yet. Okay, it's the end of the world. They've they have no cards in hand. Oh, cool.
Do we think this wins the game? One, six, four, six. Da -da, da -da, da -da. So this is 13, 14, 15, 16. They have 17. Miss Marvel goes mid. Fuck it. Let's do it. I love gambling. My heart is pounding right now. Okay. Chat, I'm pretty sure we just beat their fucking ass. Chat, I'm pretty sure we just beat their fucking ass. Miss Marvel! Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. We put her in and she immediately wins us a game. <laughs> fucking immediate Miss Marvel dub. She just shows up and wins. Now, anyone saying you win without Miss Marvel, shut up. Don't stop it. Okay, this is a hand that really needs a Hope Summers. Hi, YouTube. Oh, probably not. This hand needs a Hope Summers more than anything ever. I'm getting comboed. I'm getting comboed. Okay, I do like the vision thing that I get off Bar Sinister. But I am definitely getting comboed. <laughs> Unpleasant. Oh, I'm getting Cerebro 3. That's kind of a different thing, isn't it? Cage about to carry. I don't think he is. Don't they just put a Cerebro in Bar Sinister and I die? cards in hand. We don't know if they've been hit by what's-his-face or not. They destroy that. That was Basted, and that was Basted. So one of the cards they have in hand was Basted. Agent double zero and seven. Thank you. Welcome back to the best. Okay. But like at this point, if they have the card Mystique and it's been basted, I am dead, right? They have the card Mystique, it's been basted, I die. They have the card Mystique, it's been basted, I still die anyway, right? Because that's, uh, they're adding seven each one. Actually, so they add seven times four. It's 28. I can add 888. I add 24. They don't use all their energy. I win that lane on a Red Hulk. If it is Basted, I'm dead. If it's not Basted, I think I can win.
Not Bastard. I'm pretty sure I win on this, but I'm not positive. They should add 28 here to the middle. I will win this game on a Red Hulk proc, I think? Unless I did my math wrong. They had seven more. Oh, I don't even need the Red Hulk proc. Cool. They had 24, not 28. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, if that Mystique was Bastard, I mean... That ends up being like 13 million here. Rebro was, the Rhino was, and the Sentinel was, and they had four cards in hand the next turn. We actually knew that, I think. Yo, the one Omega. Thank you for the hype train. I appreciate that. Welcome. How's the Cat Marvel working out? We're going to figure out. We're going to figure that out. That's a horrifying snap. Hold on. You know what? No, I'll play. Oh, no, I got the end turn bug. Oh, no, I got the end turn bug. I didn't get the end turn bug. Good for me. So if he goes Shang Demon. If he goes Shang Demon Kitty, that's what I would be doing here if I were him. The question is like... Shang Demon Kitty beats me, but I can play around that by playing my own Kitty somewhere else, right? Like, I can play Kitty on here and say, you don't have... It's like, do I play around points or do I play around Shang?
Okay, the answer was I win anyway. Very little, at least. Generally, I will want the snap as soon as I know this is a location I can play Red Hulk, I think. I am fairly certain what I want to do is target the move cards with this so they can go to the left. Very comfortable with that. How do I feel about this situation? I think that's how I feel about this situation. Perfect. Eight shit. They call him the Submariner. First ever name. <laughs> yeah, for real. So we got Ange into Kitty, into Cap Marv, into Jeff. Intriguing. That's really good.
Namor instead of Miss Marvel? Holy shit. What a chef. That's unfortunate. We wanted to use that. They're kind of nutting off, but the location restricts them from doing stuff in some pretty real ways. Like, they're definitely nutting off here. But I'm not sure they ever beat what we're doing, which is... Kitty, move Jeff, play Vision middle? I don't know how they beat this. Maybe they can. This just feels like a bunch of shit, you know what I mean? This seems like a lot of points. Actually, is there ever a world where we go Cap Marvel instead? Uh, like... No, there's not. Okay, fuck it, sure. Let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. We can die to like a... Uh, uh, that's really bad. Uh, we still win, though. I mean, that's horrifying, but like, he was big enough. He was big enough to win. It certainly feels like you. Like, that's a snap you should have made very easily, but instead you waited to see what I would do. And I, I hate that. Probably just boomers. I don't know about that. We actually beat a Professor X, I think. No, they cannot cannonball my Hulk. That is correct. Uh, 
I don't know. They cannonball my Captain Marvel. She then goes back. And then I try to win on the tiebreakers on other... On other... Because I'll be up eight in the other lanes, right? So they cannonball my Captain Marvel? Oh, wow. It's just an Annihilus? Okay, so yeah. They cannonball my Captain Marvel. I play this. She goes back and... Oh, she doesn't even need to move. Because they played a hood. So I was thinking she would go back and add that power to the left, too. She didn't even need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually played that correctly. They did good. They did great. We overcame so many goblins. That's actually crazy. That is an incredible amount of goblins to overcome. I'm not going to lie. And all thanks to Carol. Shout out to Brie Larson. We love you. Morbius. Blade discarding Swarmbius. Brave? Yeah. Good for them. So this should... Interesting... That is just a super interesting location in a game like this, where we're already pretty restricted on space. Wow. Corvus Glaive hits Dracula. That's very good for me and probably another swarm. Okay, so if they have four cards in hand, three of them are swarms right now. So their hand is three swarms. If I draw a Red Hulk, I think I'm probably winning this game. That snap makes me feel uncomfortable. Modok, now they have an infinite amount of swarms and an apocalypse. Miss Marvel doesn't get me anywhere on the Raptors. There's a Red Hulk. How am I losing? I guess I could die to Proxima. Oh, God. 
No way. Swarm, swarm? Okay. 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 That gambit was the scariest fucking thing I have ever seen. I'm not gonna lie. How is Captain Marvel felt? Fine. I would say she has felt fine. She has baited me into some stays that I don't like. Yeah, this is pretty much is the card Loki in their hand, because Kitty's going to prevent them from drawing a card. Yeah, the card Loki is not in there. Hard Loki not being in their hand is very important. What an odd situation we have. What an odd situation we have. No Shang, right? There we go. We definitely could have played a Red Hulk there, but I felt like it was more something that I enjoyed more to just rely on the Baxter building having Captain Marvel in it. So if we overcommitted there, she'd be able to bail us out. A little too likely to lose if they spread it. Oh, fuck yeah, spread it. How we doing? I'm doing alright, Mickey. I'm getting kind of hungry, but I have protein bars. I promised I would play good decks today. That's what we're doing. Ange Kitty. Oh, Ange Snowguard. Okay. I have Ange Kitty. That's kind of nice.
Why bother playing good decks if you can't win with them? Dude, tell me about it. Hope, kitty. Yeah, Dark Dimension Doom is really slick here, I think. Well, that's horrifying. The random Doc Ock. That's definitely not good. Carol is nice. She works in Dark Dimension, right? Okay, so I just win the game heavily here. Heavily. 